All right, so if you saw the last video, you saw us opening the click tuning arrow kit. And uh, today we are fitting that with uh, some rib nuts, countersunk ones, so we can get it all fitted. Then it's coming off and Chelsea's gonna wrap the outside. Uh, we found a wrap color that's really, really close to this one. So it should be uh, pretty solid to just uh, wrap right over this. The only reason I'm doing that is because the paint on the car is actually not that bad. The body's clean at this point and I really just wanna do over a uh, wrap over top of the uh, over fenders. It also adds a little bit of structure to them. So when they crack underneath it, the vinyl kind of holds it together. So uh, a little trick there I've learned. But yeah, so far we've got the rear overs done. Um, they, we tested them the other day, but now they're actually bolted on and done with rib nuts. Uh, I've trimmed the inside of this, which we don't have the right spacer on the wheel right now. But we've got ourselves our clearance for the wheel. Um, the original over fender was gone flared to about here and then it had this huge ugly mishap here because I had to cut because the tire hits the bumper uh, I cut those before to fit the flares those went all the way to here so kind of a downer on that but um, this is like one of the smaller offset wheels I'll be running um, and I'm, I'm okay with this fitment uh, but my other wheels have 20 mil more which if you go here should be just about 20 mil, mil more and then uh, we'll probably end up putting one more rib nut here with a spacer um, after we drive it for a little while and see how it does. And then in the front, we've got this over fender on. Uh, fitment's really, really good. Again, I had to trim right here uh, for some clearance and so it can get a little bit more flexibility. So now when the fender tire makes, maybe grabs the fender, we'll be okay and not blow the fender to pieces. Um, right now, we are working on the wing. So I've got my center rib nut here. And for those of you guys that don't know what a rib nut is, I'll grab one out of her. Oh, yep, yeah, that's good, that'll work. And then a nut, I'm sure somewhere in here. So, what a rib nut does is, it goes in the hole that you drill, um, and for this one's 11 30 seconds and then you get uh, we got some black Allen key button head uh, deals there so this gets put onto the tool which you'll see here in a minute and then these thread right into here so now you've got removable rivets basically um, with nice screws so you can see machine button head fitment on that stuff so it fits um, really nice on there allows us to remove it and also allows us to um, when the panel is damaged or whatever, pull it off and just pop another one on without having to rivet all the time. So I've already got my chaser holes uh, here. So I will drill these out and then get them out to the size we need for the uh, riv nut and uh, install the rest of this stuff. Obviously always look to see what you're drilling through on the other side. So now we get that drilled, get that drilled to our larger side, size for our rib nuts. And this particular drill bit is just slightly on the side. So I just gotta round it off a little bit there. And my battery's dead. Oh man, bummer. I'll just swap batteries around. I catch my hoodie straps. Dude. Yeah, you always pull them out. That's why I end up you know, like, trying to kill me or something. Never. Never. You heard it, people. You heard it. If I ever go missing, my girlfriend's <laughs> the first person. So how these work is basically you, uh, you'll thread this on just like a normal rivet how you stick it in the uh, pilot the hole inside of it you'll push these in here it's just I have really tight fit and then just like a rivet you'll pull that on there and then you just use this to unthread it out there a little tip for it is I put a little uh, anti-seize on here every like 15 or 20 rib nuts 
So that's in there, that's flush. Now you have a screw in the body where you've been, uh, been working or need to work. So now we've got our rib nuts in there. We can just thread them in there and get them started. Oh, that's all right. And then again, these are quarter 20s. I feel like that's the best size for this stuff. It's definitely overkill, but you want a big enough button head on here so that you don't have to run like a washer or anything. Obviously we're tightening these on the fiberglass too, so we don't want to like over crank them or anything. So there we go. Wing is on. I'm kind of a fan. It's kind of a little bit on the fence at first, but I think it, it looks all right. I'm not a huge fan of like rocket bunny wings, but I feel like this is just laid back a bit more. But the best part is, with rib nuts, if we don't like it, we just take it off, and then we just have a bunch of black screws in the back. <laughs> Sweet, so that's pretty much completion of one side. We gotta do the bumper, but we can't use uh, these steel rib nuts for that. And then, uh, we still gotta do the front bumper again. The front bumper is going to have to be riveted because an aluminum riveted because these uh, rib nuts will straight rip that out of there. Rip themselves straight through. But fitment's pretty good. Need to get that other spacer on the back. And we'll just work on uh, getting this sized up. Looks good. I'm excited about it. These shocks are so old. Get them up. Where are they? Where are these even come from? Okay. These are 215-45 in the front. I do that mainly so that it gives a little bit more of like uh, wheel protection for like bumps and dents and wrecking the wheels. You could run a 235-40 or a 205 or 215-40. Uh, but I like to run a little bit taller front tire. So we're trimming this here so that the front tire has clearance and doesn't hit and blow the front bumper off. Fairly simple stuff, but don't forget about that when you're adding a bunch of angle that you're gonna have to kind of make room for all that. So bummed. I couldn't see where I was cutting. I should have I should have gotten up in there and saw because I cut this very corner off where that piece goes. So now it's gonna have to get a little a little glue or a little love for that. Whoops!
Should have just cut this with a cutoff wheel. I knew that. Oh well. It's a good thing I have a low level of care. It would have been nice to have that. It's still there. Just hanging out. Photographer slash shop helper slash girlfriend. Probably girlfriend first. Probably put that order that way. Alright, one more. Rib not in, pup. Do it, pup. Switching camera operators here. Just gonna have her turn the wheel and just make sure we're gonna clear with that. Oh yeah, perfect. Sweet. Oh, that's good. About to pull my hoodie straps in and Safety wreck, first. wreck my face. May I have a bolt, please? Why, thank you, m'lady. You're welcome. Screw it in, screw it in. Mm. All right, let's get one on the top here. further than I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. 
car like won't run after this. <laughs> All right. Measure twice, drill four times. <laughs> Half of 52 is 26, mm -hmm. which is right. How pathetic is the puff right now? <laughs> Hi, guys. My, yeah, bird, yeah, mocking bird, yeah. Give her a bounce. Buttery, buttery, my Will Fitman is buttery. <laughs> That's how I roll. Buy in bulk, boys. Save money. Oh, that's probably what that noise was earlier. I need that one. Thanks. Top or bottom? Bottom. Yep. 73 on the front. 71 and three quarters on the back. Also at the track last time, my boy Joe decided to go off track a whole bunch and we killed an inner tie rod. Could have been a combination of a lot of things, but this is definitely the side that he hit multiple times. So. You know, it is what it is. I have a new one, a spare one. But I'm trying some different brands to see which one's gonna be the strongest as well. So we'll find out. If Joe, if Joe keeps trying, we'll find out sooner than later. Blown out. So this is definitely like a on to the next brand type deal. This is like the fourth brand that I've tried. And I keep having these inners blow out. This inner ball joint on the tie rod is way tighter than the last one was when I put it on. So this might have better tight fit. It's like almost worth just replacing all of the power steering system, but I just don't care enough to do it. The proper way would be to do that. But the problem is, is like all these pumps kind of seep a little bit. So I can put a new one in and it could work for a little while and then just start seeping again. So if it was a street car that I drove every day, I'd probably do that.
those were not even not even in there. That's what happens. Beat the crap out of a car. They may not have ever been tight to begin with. Might have missed them. Who knows? Seems legit. 